There are reports that Turkey's Prime Minister is about to resign. Members of the ruling AK Party say Ahmet Davutoglu isn't planning to run for the party's leadership again at the extraordinary Congress that's due in the coming weeks. Davutoglu is said to have fallen out with President Erdogan and officials say the decision not to stand follows a 90-minute meeting with Erdogan. More details are expected when Davutoglu holds a news conference on Thursday morning. Well, Louis Fishman is a professor of Middle East history at City University of New York. He's also an expert on Turkey, he joins us from New York. Thank you very much indeed for your time. What do you think has prompted this latest rift between the Prime Minister and the President? Well, I, I think for, for about six months now, I mean, since the November elections, and even before that, we always had this tension between the two people. I mean, is the government of Turkey, you know, with, you know, Erdogan now president, is the AKP going to present this idea that there's going to be a, you know, sort of a checks and balances between two people? What we see is that Erdogan wanted most, wants most of the power and doesn't want to release this to or, or relinquish his power to his prime minister, uh, Davutoglu. And it seemed the breaking point was last Friday when Davutoglu was blocked from basically appointing party uh, executives in the, in the provinces. So, so it was a big message to, to Davutoglu. If he continued, he would be at the grace of the president, um, who is Recep Tayyip Erdogan, who, you know, who actually uh, allowed Davutoglu to, uh, you know, uh, to get into this p position as prime minister. But it seems like it's finally broken. Mm. The former Prime Minister of Sweden, Carl Bildt, tweeted about this. He says the credibility of Turkey's EU road rests today with Prime Minister at Abitolu. If he leaves, all bets are off. How is this going to affect Turkey's international relations if Davutoglu does go? I think in the, in the greater scope, I, I don't think it's going to have that much of a, a difference. I mean, we know in the long run, and that's why uh, the, 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 his tweet, I think, was a bit presumptuous and short-sighted, that we know that Erdogan has agreed to everything that Davutoglu has done in Europe. So I think that was a bit short-sighted, and it's a bit um, intervening in, in, in internal Turkish politics. So I think at this time, it wasn't the wisest tweet um, to put out in the, you know, the, in the world of the tweets or the airwaves. But uh, when all is said and done, Erdogan is um, the, the, the major uh, power behind the AKP. He has been for the last, you know, 13 years. And I think Davutoglu had this sort of illusion that, um, you know, there could be two leaders and, and, and sort of providing a more middle road um, and a softening of the, of, of the party politics to the world. So I think what the world's going to understand is that when they deal with any prime minister, um, they are dealing with uh, Erdogan in the end. And it's almost surprising that they didn't know this. Mm. Um, they, of course, there's going to be a lot of interest in who the su successor to Davutoglu is going to be. And if Erdogan manages to pack the government and all the ministries with people who are loyal to him, is he effectively getting the control in the presidency that he failed to get when he tried to recreate um, the constitution, as it were, of Turkey and centralized control within the presidency previously. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's no doubt that for internal politics, I think this, this is crucial. Um, we have to remember that when you had the academics arrested for signing the petition, Davutoglu was much softer and said that he was against arresting them and putting them in jail before trial. Um, where, where the more pro-Erdogan group was very upset with this, and they were actually released. So internally, this is a very strong message that the, the clampdowns on freedoms could very well continue, both in the press and, 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 and among academics. Um, and, and abroad, they should, they should take this as, as, as a sign also that, that, that things um, will continue um, to become more precarious in Turkey. We have to remember that just if you saw the big brawl in the parliament just three or four days ago, um, this was about lifting the immunity uh, of, of the HDP uh, uh, MPs. So, I mean, Turkey is really in a, like I said, precarious situation. It doesn't look good. These changes at this time do not look good for, for the long-term stability of the country. It really shows... Um, a, a, you know, a, a very public a, a, a fight between the party itself. Um, so yes, Erdogan's going to get control of the party, but it's not, it's not looking good for them. We, we do have to remember that they did get 49% in the last elections, so they're standing strong in this sense. Um, but it, the, the image is not good at all.
Louis Fishman talking to us live from uh, New York. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks for having me. Coming up on